Okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to uh, learn how to create a table that we can sort by column. So for example, right here, if we click on uh, class mark, we can go ahead and sort this. This will be in ascending order and all of the other elements in the other uh, columns um, all change to match whatever order we have in class mark. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get started. So basically what we've got right here is we've already done import PySimple GUI as SG. We're also importing operator, which we'll get to later. And we've pre-filled in our data that will go into this table. Um, now, generally that's going to be our headings with our column names, which we'll be sorting by. And then it's gonna be a 2D array with the actual data. Um, so we've got one large array and inside we have an array representing each individual row. So let's get started, started in actually writing the code that's going to allow us to display and sort this data. Um, we're gonna start by just creating the layout. So we'll say layout, and this is gonna be a 2D array, and uh, we'll have uh, values. Well, okay, so first of all, what we need to do is we need to create the table element. So we're gonna have sg.table. Um, it's gonna be the only element in our window. So we'll have that. And then we will have, um, also this should be in another array actually. So there we go, okay, perfect. Um, so we're gonna have values equals data. So that's gonna be the actual data that goes, this data itself, the, the 2D array that's displayed in the table. Next we're gonna have uh, headings equals headings. If you've done any of the table tutorials, this is pretty standard. We'll have max column width equals 25. We don't want the columns to be too big. Um, and I spelled width wrong. We'll have uh, auto size columns. So this is gonna automatically change the columns based on uh, the data that's in there um, up to 25. Uh, we'll have justification right. Um, so what that means, all that means is that we're going, is that all the data is going to be um, by default dis like displayed on the right. Uh, of the column. So on this side as opposed to this side. Mm. All right, and next we're going to have number of rows 20. So we only really want to display 20 rows at a time. Um, we could change this as we want. It's just kind of arbitrary in this case. Uh, we want these, we want to have alternating row colors to be able to easily distinguish the rows. So we'll have alternating row color equals light yellow. Um, next, we'll have key equals table to be able to actually access uh, the table element itself from our event loop and just do things and react to events that are happening. Uh, enable events equals true. That's really what, what enables us to click and do things within the table, um, which isn't really like that relevant. It isn't the most relevant element of this tutorial. I mean, I usually just have it by default. Uh, expand x equals true. It's expanding on the being able to expand on the x and y axes. Uh, these just give us a lot more flexibility in terms of the size and how we can change things um, to view them. Uh, then this one's going to be super important. So enable events is usually to be able to do things within the table itself. Right here we have enable click events, and this is what enables us to click on the header. So click on elements that are actually outside the table right here, um, or outside just these rows, let's say. So we'll have enable click events equals true. Um, and I think that's all we really need for now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the parentheses right here. And that's gonna be the only element that we have um, because we're just displaying a table in this window. Now, um, what you could do uh, if you wanted to make, like for a more practical application, is you'd have a form or you'd have some sort of a uh, way to input data that would be stored and then formatted into a 2D array and headings, and that would go into your table element. So next we're gonna create a window. We're gonna say sg.window, which is actually gonna hold this table element. So we'll have sg.window, um, <clears throat> and then we're gonna have, we're just gonna call it, um, we'll call it grades table. Right here we had the table element. We, we had the table element as a title, but I'm actually just going to change the title to grades table in our demo. We'll have layout, which is this uh, this one right up here, and then we're going to have TTK theme 
equals clam and resizable equals true. So this one kind of just allows us to resize things in this way, um, which is just generally pretty useful to have. And it's kind of a boon because a lot of Python GUI libraries don't really allow you to do this. So I've got that. Um, also, one thing I want to point out is actually like some of this theme stuff. Like I would normally not do this, but I actually got this tutorial or this, I got some of this code from a website called uh, called Trinket, which has a lot of great tutorials. I'd recommend checking it out. Um, I got code from here and then I modified it to make it simpler and easier to uh, understand. So now what we're going to have is our event loop. And this is going to be pretty standard. We're going to have event values equals window.read. This is basically where we react to events and where we would write the functionality to allow the sorting to happen on a click here. Uh, so while true, um, uh, pretty standard if event equals uh, sg.winclosed uh, break. So just allowing the user to basically close this window. Uh, next, we're going to have if is instance event and tuple. So what this is doing is this is checking that this event is a is a data type tuple, and this is the important is this is the important because the only time our event variable will be a tuple is when we are doing something involving a table. So this if statement right here already presupposes or already um, supposes that we are doing something with the table. If we're not um, doing an event with the table, then it would go to a different if statement or it would do nothing at all, depending on what code is written here. But right now is, is, is instance event tuple. Um, this means that we are handling some sort of event coming from the table. Um, so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna do if event zero uh, equals table. So something is happening in the table then we're going to be able to go ahead and more deeply analyze that event. So if this is really coming from a table, which it should be based on this if statement, then we can get some additional data on what has been done. Um, so what we're going to say is if event two zero uh, equals negative one uh, and event two one uh, does not equal negative one, then go ahead and sort. So what's important to notice right here is uh, event two zero, or event, th this right here, event two zero um, equals negative one. So this is saying that um, basically if the row is negative one, so if we're clicking somewhere right here, up here in this row. So basically we're only going to react if we're clicking on something right here. Um, and we're also going to only react if the so basically this first one right here, this uh, event two zero, that's actually representing the row that we're clicking on. So that represents represents row. I'm just putting a comment here so it's clear. And this one right here, this event two one, represents the column. So whatever column that we're clicking on. Okay. So it's good to make that clear to begin with. So these are just comments right here, just to make sure that everything is clear. Um, so this is basically saying right here, um, so we need to be like, we're only going to react here, or we're only going to sort or uh, carry out some action if we're clicking on this first row up here, and if we're not clicking on this column. So if event two one does not equal negative one, which is just a row number. And then there's, there's no point in sorting according to the row number. It's already sorted anyways. So in the event that we're clicking here and we're not clicking on this column, then we can go ahead and do our action, which is sorting. Um, so this is just like a bit arbitrary, but this is how the row and the column is represented um, in our event zero or in our, sorry, not in our event zero, but in our event variable, which is representing a event originating from the table. So now that we've done that, we're going to get the column that's been clicked on, call num clicked equals, I'm just gonna go ahead and move this up here. Call num clicked equals event uh, two one, because that is the column that we're clicking on. And we're getting this as long as it's not this first column right here. And then we're going to get a new table. 
So we're going to generate some new, uh, we're going to generate basically a new sorted 2D array. So probably it's better to call this new table data equals sort table, which is a function we haven't created yet. And that's going to take our data. So our data is this 2D array right here. And that's going to create the column that we, that's going to take the column that we clicked on, call non clicked as input. And this is a function we'll create right up here, actually. We're not going to write the function just yet, but we're just going to create the function definition. So data column clicked. Actually, let's just create column num clicked. Okay. So that's going to be some integer representing the column that we clicked on right up here. So we're basically going to change our data, our 2D array right here, uh, based on the column that's been clicked. Um, and basically, let's say, for example, we click on class mark. Our 2D array is going to change so that class mark is in ascending order. And all of the data matching each row, the position is changed to um, match that. So for example, right here, if we do class mark, um, we have chart. We basically change this so we have 18, 31, 55, 77. But for class mark 18, the name is Charlie, the age is 17, and the homeroom class is D. So basically all the data surrounding each class, class mark has changed to match the order here. So yeah, basically we're changing the position of each row to match the order specified by class mark. So we're basically getting a new table that's been sorted, and then we are going to update this table with our new 2D array that's been sorted. So we're going to have window table. Remember table, this table right here, comes from our key right here. So that's allowing us to actually um, access events from and um, update or change things within our table in real time. So we'll update, uh, new table. Well, new table data, right? Uh, okay, cool. So now that we've done that, um, that's actually pretty much it for um, the table events themselves. So we'll window.close right here. Uh, now what we want to work on is we want to work on actually um, sorting the data in the table. So let's go ahead and let's do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a try catch. So we're going to try to sort it, and if not, we'll have some um, error handling. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to try, which we're actually going to conduct the, we're going to execute the function necessary to sort this data. So we're going to say table data equals uh, sorted, which is just a Python function actually. So this is a function built into Python uh, data. And then key equals operator dot item getter. Uh, column num clicked. So what's interesting is that this column number that we get right here, name, class, mark, age, homeroom, class, this actually corresponds to an index in our 2D array, right? Um, so this is, big, this is going to be index zero. So name is going to be index zero, class mark is going to be one, age is going to be uh, two, and homeroom class is going to be three. So really whatever column number we're selecting right here matches um, an index in our 2D array, um, an index, so basically the index in each uh, array um, for whatever it is we selected. So for example, if we click on class mark, um, right, right down here we would get the index uh, one, and then we would go to the one, we could go to the one in each uh, array in our 2D array in order to get the class mark. So um, because of that, we're able to use column number clicked um, within this function to just sort everything in our 2D array by whatever column we clicked on. Because there's a matching index between the event we're getting from the table and um, the actual index itself in the 2D array. So basically, in conclusion, this line allows us to sort all of our data um, by whatever column that we've clicked on in our table. Um, if that doesn't work, then we'll have a pop-up of we'll sg that pop-up error. Uh, error in sort table, or error 
in sorting table, uh, exception in sorting table, and then matching that up with the event that we specified right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to return uh, table data. Okay, so in this function, we're basically getting the data, our 2D array, we're getting the column that we clicked on, which also matches the uh, relevant index in our 2D array. Um, and we're going to use that index to um, sort the 2D array um, and return that sorted 2D array, which we will then display in our, in our table. So we're using the sort table function right here to get our sorted, well actually just change the name to sorted table data just to make it like more logical. Um, and then we just, that data that's now been sorted, we just display in our table right here. So this is actually just a demo application. Let's go ahead and run this and see if there are any errors and you troubleshoot. So we're gonna run this. Okay, we've got a problem, no attribute read right here. Just go ahead and, okay. Something about curses, window.read. Let's go ahead and see what the problem is right here. So we've got event, comma, values. Uh, oh, so we typed in sg.window right here, but we didn't actually set it to a variable. It should be set, set to window uh, equals sg.window, and then we can make use of that right down here. So a little error right there. Let's go ahead and fix that and run it again. Okay, perfect. Uh, that's interesting. So I think it actually works, but our color is like a bit off. So. I think probably to match the other one, what I forgot to do right here is set a theme because like all the other coloring and stuff doesn't really work so well unless we have this theme of light green. And again, I got this from a tutorial on a website called Trinket where they had this color screen, which look, this color scheme, which looked really nice. And that's why I kind of ended up doing this. But so we're gonna set the theme right up here um, for the colors. Again, this isn't so relevant to sorting, but we want this to work, so. Okay, perfect. Match to do that. Okay, and it seems like everything works pretty well. Um, cool, okay. So um, that's how to create a table that can be served by column. Uh, if you liked this video and want to see more like it, please remember to like and subscribe. You can also find this code uh, online on GitHub. Look in the description for the link. Uh, have a nice day.